Welcome to The Manly Catholic. In this podcast, we will inspire, challenge, and equip all men to become the men they were created to be. Join us as we journey together to become the best versions of ourselves and strive to change our communities one man at a time. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Good morning. For the past few years, I have helped lead and, and, and be chaplain with this certain ministry that takes young adults up into the mountains of Colorado. It's called VLA Ministries. And it was started by a man here in Grand Rapids, a good Catholic man, about 25 years ago. Because he recognized, even back then, a form of isolation and separation that was that was happening and, and taking place with the young adult demographic. So connected to the social media platforms and their, and their phones. So connected to, to video games. He recognized that they were, they were lacking in just simple greeting and, and, and communication skills with other human beings. Not even recognizing a, a, a fellow daughter or son of Christ in public on the sidewalk to make eye contact and smile or even properly shake someone's hand. So he recognized there was this type of isolation that was happening. So God put on his heart to start a ministry where he would take these young adults, move them out of this dictatorship of noise in our culture we find ourselves falling into sometimes, and take them up into the raw creation of God in the mountains of Colorado. A week-long spiritual retreat where there's prayer, spiritual direction, adoration, Mass, building in community and fraternity. For we meet throughout the whole entire year, and they're different groups every year. He handpicks and selects about 15 people to do these things. With two priests, myself and then Father Jean Luc, who is, who is a monk from the community of St. John. He's at a monastery in Romania, so he's part of this crew. We fly him out to, to, the, to the United States. We pick him up as we, we're driving out to the mountains. But throughout the year, we meet periodically so that we can pray together. We train together. We get all geared up and learn how to, how to use the gear that's given to us safely and, and even mountain survival. So this, this trip is no joke. It's not a vacation. It's an opportunity and re, a retreat to allow these adults to enter into the deep presence of God. So we do everything together to destroy the isolation that is in their hearts and in their minds, whether they know it or not. So we build community and fraternity and family. We do everything together when we're in the mountains. We drive out there, so we travel together. We're all praying together, the rosary, the angelus, evening prayer, morning prayer, night prayer. When, when we're in the mountains, we do everything together. We collect water together, filter water together. We prepare food and we eat together. We wake up at the same time. We go to bed at the same time. We climb the mountains all together at the same time. We jump in the cold creeks and the cold lakes together at the same time. But all the while, the most important thing is we come together in prayer and we're in the mountains. And if God allows it, we summit a couple 14,000 foot peaks. And we have one throughout the whole year that we're centered on. This year it was Mount Massive. So we went to Mount Massive Wilderness, which is about two hours south, southwest of Denver. And that's our goal. One of our goals is for all of us to summit this peak. We do it together. There were 15 of us. Only 10 made it to the top of Mount Massive. The other people didn't die. They stayed at base camp. Because some of them were, were exhausted. And some of them were suffering from altitude sickness. But even though the group was centered... Set, uh, separated, we were still connected because they stayed at base camp and guess what they did for the next 10 hours while we were out hiking? They helped pray us up the mountain. And as we were climbing the mountain, entering into the hot sun and the sweat and we're thirsty and we're hungry and our legs are burning, we're praying for them. Even though we were separated, we were still connected and they were praying us up the mountain. Very powerful experience. Father Jean-Luc, the monk who was with us, he, he, prayed mass, he prayed Mass, just like I did. We'd switch on and off. 
And he said something in a homily that I'll never forget, and it's connected to our first reading and our gospel and our second reading as well. He said this, and it's very important for us to remember this, a Christian alone is a Christian in danger. A Christian alone is a Christian in danger. Elijah is alone, and he's in danger, isn't he? Sure, everything can be stripped from somebody, water, food, clothing, shelter, friends. You truly are alone. But as I've been a priest for four years, I've counseled many people, single, married. And there's people who will come to me who are married and have kids and they have a career, and they are very alone and isolated. And it's because they stop praying. It's because they stop receiving the great sacraments of the Catholic Church. For that is what unites us to God. Prayer is the most important thing in our lifeline to God. And so we find Elijah alone, don't we, in our first reading. And there's a deep connection with our first reading in our gospel today. And so I'd like to read our first reading and kind of bring our gospel into it as well as I go through it. This comes from the book of Kings. Elijah went a day's journey into the desert. It's kind of like us when we went up into the mountains. You know, you too can enter a desert. Sometimes God forces us into a desert or we can voluntarily go into a desert. Why? That's where we can encounter silence. Silence is a language that God speaks to us. We have to learn that. How can we learn that as a community here at OLC, not only going to Mass and receiving the sacraments, but our adoration chapel? Do you know we have one? It's open 24-7. Jesus exposed the blessed sacrament. There's no code. You can come in whenever you want. And we're blessed here at OLC because there's no other parish in the Diocese of Grand Rapids that has perpetual adoration. Those are the mountains. That's the desert. That's the silence. I encourage you to go there as much as you can, even if it's for five seconds or an hour. Use it. Use it. So Elijah goes into the desert until he came to a broom tree and sat beneath it. He prayed for death, saying... This is enough, O oh Lord, take my life, for I am no better than my father's. I don't know about you, my brothers and sisters, but there have been times in my life, most especially when I was away from the Catholic Church and not praying, satisfying my own needs, being very selfish. I had many things in my life, and I was in desolation. And there, there were a couple times in my life where I said, Lord, what is the meaning of all of this? This is enough. Why don't you just take me? <laughs> maybe, maybe you're in that place now, or maybe you know someone who's in that place. But we need not fear, and we can learn from Elijah as we go on. He lay down and fell asleep under the broom tree, but then an angel touched him and ordered him to get up and eat. Eat what? Well, 2,500 years later, us as Christians, we know exactly what he's talking about. The most holy Eucharist. Eat. Eat my flesh and drink my blood, as he says in our gospel, for you will have eternal life. And that's how Elijah gets his strength. If you're in darkness, eat. Eat, be strengthened. Elijah looked, and there at his head was a hearth cake and a jug of water, the consecrated host and the consecrated chalice, the flesh and blood and flesh and blood in the chalice, what we have at Mass. After he ate and drank, he lay down again. But the angel of the Lord came back a second time, touched him and ordered, get up and eat. He's eating again. He needed a lot of strength, didn't he? Else the journey will be too long for you. Lord, you called me to the priesthood. And I'm in desolation. You called me to this, Lord. You said you'd give me all the graces to get this job done as being a holy priest. And it's not very fun. It is now. I'm here at all, see it's great. But there have been times where it's like, oh my goodness, these clerics are heavy today. Lord, you called me to this. And he, told, he tells me I have to pray and I have to eat the Eucharist. If I don't, then my journey in the priesthood will be too long. Without me, it'll be, it'll be a drudgery. It'll be too long. And it's the same with you, who are most of you are called to marriage as well, too. Sometimes the journey is drudgery. And if you don't pray together as a family, if you don't teach your kids the Catholic faith, if you don't go to Mass and receive the sacraments, it will be tough. It will be hard. The journey will be too long. But when you give everything to the Lord and receive the sacraments, then you will have the strength. So Elijah, he got up, he ate, and he drank. He ate the Eucharist. He received the blood of Christ. Then strengthened by that food, he walked 40 days and 40 nights to the mountain of God, Horeb. 
The mountain of God that he's going to is Mount Sinai. It's where Moses received the Ten Commandments, which is very interesting. Elijah, a great prophet called by God to proclaim to the northern kingdom who had fallen into idol worship, is now being chased all over the northern kingdom by Queen Jezebel because Elijah destroyed all the prophets of Baal. And, Eli- and, and Queen Jezebel killed all the prophets of Yahweh except Elijah. Now Jezebel is after Elijah, and he's running, and he's tired, and all his friends deserted him, and everyone around him has, has died, all his fellow prophets, and so he's under this broom tree. God restores him and then takes him to Mount Horeb where the covenant was made. He takes his prophet to the mountain to remind him of the love of his commandments and statutes and decrees. Here's the source. Remember this so that you can be rejuvenated and and re-energized. Remember the covenant. God's covenants, he never goes back on. He does not lie. He can't. And so he's reminding Elijah, I am with you always. Remember my covenant. What does that mean for us today? What, what, What is the Mount Horeb that we go to when we need to be reminded of our covenant? It's baptism. It's baptism. St. Paul in in our second reading said, Do not grieve the Holy Spirit, for you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit. Do not grieve it, for this is your day of redemption. You're baptized. You're sealed with the Holy Spirit. And when you go back to that, you are filled with peace and joy, for you know God loves you and he'll never go back on his covenant, especially baptism. Elijah goes to Mount Horeb. You know the rest of the story. Remember, he was in the cave, and there was fire, and there was wind, and there was an earthquake, and the Lord was not in any of those things, the powers of this world and pleasures, that things that, that tempt us. They're powerful. They pull at us. But he was in the cave. He was in adoration, and he heard God, not in those loud things, but in a whisper, in a whisper. So he was rejuvenated. He was strengthened, and guess what? He went right back into the northern kingdom, all alone, but with the power of God to proclaim the truth of God to those who had fallen away and worshiping other gods. So the Eucharist gives us strength to do that as Christians. When we were baptized, we were baptized as priest, prophet, and king. We're all prophets. So we ask Elijah to give us the strength to go out to the northern kingdoms of this world, to go to the Queen Jezebels and the King Ahabs who have fallen away from God, who are leading all the people astray with false teaching and doctrine. We as prophets of the Catholic faith are called, whether in prayer and fasting or action and deed, to go out and proclaim the truth. Go out and proclaim the truth to the kings and queens of this world who are telling us abortion's okay. And it's going to be a, 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 your tax dollars are going to pay for it, even partial birth abortion. We as prophets have to go to them, to those political leaders and governors and say no, through prayer and fasting, action and deed, and the way we vote. We have to go to those governing bodies who are trying to force on the Catholic Church same-sex marriage. We have to say no. We have to be strong and courageous like the prophet Elijah. No. No more. For it will destroy people, not bring them life and joy and peace. No to human trafficking. No to all the debauchery we can find on the Internet that destroys us. No, no, no. We have to say no. Prayer, fasting, almsgiving, all the things that... The, the sacraments give us strength to do and to teach our children well the Catholic faith so that when they're older and they become politicians and lawyers and teachers and architects or parents themselves or priests or religious, they'll know the truth and they will proclaim it boldly for that is the adventure of a lifetime as a Christian to give our lives to God and to not fear and to go to those northern kingdoms and the kings and the queens and say no. Convert to God where you will find real peace and joy. So as we celebrate this great Mass today, as we receive the Eucharist that strengthens us here at this mountain of the altar, let us ask Elijah to give us strength. Let us ask St. Paul to give us strength. Let us ask Jesus, who loves us very much, to give us strength, because deep in our hearts when we receive the Eucharist, he says, do not fear. I am with you. I'll take care of you. Just give yourself to me, and everything will be okay. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you all so much for tuning in to another episode of The Manly Catholic. 
If you have not already done so, please hit that subscribe button wherever you get your podcast to make sure you don't miss a single episode. It will also help grow the show and reach as many men as possible. We truly think this podcast can change families and help men to change the world. Thank you again so much for tuning in and God bless you.